Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us at Domo Palooza 2023. Today, I am excited to talk to you about workflows in App Studio, two exciting new pieces of functionality that I'm guessing you saw on the main stage uh, this morning in the, in the greater presentation. I'm excited to dive into them today with you in a little bit more detail. More specifically, what we're going to learn today, we're going to talk about App Studio. We're going to talk about workflows, those exciting new products that I mentioned. Uh, not only are we going to talk about them, but I'm going to share a story with you of how we use them at Domo and when and how you should use workflows. Oftentimes, we get new tools, new functionality in the software, and I'm left going, that's really cool, and left wondering to figure out how to practically apply it to what I do in Domo. So we've got a continuum that, that we'll talk through and, and kind of a, a matrix that I think we can plot your use cases on to help you understand exactly where to start and, and how to get going with the tool. And I'm really excited about that. Now, before we, we dive in any further, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Dan Hendrickson. I'm the Director of Business Strategy and Growth here at Domo, which is a ton of fun because I get to get my hands on all of our new products uh, right in that conceptual state, uh, get my hands on them early, get to use them a lot, get to have a ton of fun with them. And prior to that, I've been here at Domo for uh, nearly eight years now. Uh, prior to this, I, I worked as a general manager at Domo Everywhere, and before that in solutions consulting and, and various roles in the sales organization. And I bring that up because I spent a ton of time working with customers exactly like yourselves. And we're going to talk about some of those experiences today. But what I found is that the experiences that I have and had uh, in coming to Domo and in using our software every day are identical to those that you guys are going through all the time. So let's let's start at the very beginning, right? This was my world prior to Domo. And, and I think you all can relate or sympathize. And, and some of you are, are further along in the journey of using Domo, but it was a continual request for data and information and trying to package that up into insights and get more data to answer follow-on questions and aggregate it and, and endless requests and what really equated to a whole lot of decisions uh, made on gut feeling and intuition. And then joining Domo, all my data's here. It's packaged up. We've got data from all the systems flowing in. We've got that data cleansed and manipulated and cleaned up. And all of our data's here in these nice, tidy little data sets, which is awesome. And, and you all have experienced that today. And that gets us to the point where we can provide insights, right? While data is great, the real value comes when we start to provide insight. I want to tell you about a dashboard that we built in Domo, a use case right here internally related to how all of our accounts get assigned their CSM. Whenever we assign a new account or there are some staffing changes in client services, CSM assignments need to be made. Now, we brought all that data in from all the different systems, the ones that show the staff and who's available and who our new accounts are from our CRM. And we brought all that together and we built the dashboard that you see here, really the card. And uh, I apologize about that being blurred out. Uh, this is a real example of how we use Domo and there's some sensitive data there. But in a nutshell, we had a card that presented a list uh, by group of, of the different uh, groups that had accounts needed to be assigned to a CSM. You could drill in, you can see some details on that account. We even put a link right in there so that you could click on that. It would take you straight to Salesforce, which is our CRM. And within Salesforce, that CS leader could uh, choose the CSM that they wanted, and then they'd fire a note off to that CSM and introduce them to the account. We even had some uh, folks that went in and created alerts, right? So they didn't have to remember to go look at that dashboard periodically. They would just get an alert that let them know when there was an account that needed to be assigned. And that worked well. Um, initially, I mean, we're a startup. We didn't have a ton of customers. It wasn't happening with a high level of frequency, and it was manageable. But um, as, as the platform matured and as our need for better solutions matured, we took this a step further and implemented it, it into a Domo app, right? Uh, this app transitioned from uh, clicking on a link and going to Salesforce to just really providing a drop down that allowed those CS leaders to, to take action right there inside of Domo. They didn't have to leave and go to the CRM and get in this uh, secondary system. They were just able to do it right there. Um, it was a streamlined experience. It, it helped to get done more quickly, and, and everybody was really happy with that. And if you think of all your use cases at Domo, 
they fall on some sort of continuum based on how mature the use case is, how high a value it is to the company, and how frequently it's a problem. The one we just talked about, right, our CS assignment started at Insight. It was, it was sufficient to just provide some insight as to which accounts needed an assignment. I mentioned we had some folks that, that were leveraging the learning so that they didn't have to go look at that content, but would rather proactively be notified when something needed their attention. And then we took that next step and we, uh, we incorporated action in there through a Domo app. Now, tons of you have made that leap. Hundreds, maybe thousands of customers are using apps to take intelligent action today and streamlining process exactly like we outlined. Now, this is the future. And you heard about this this morning. App Studio is going to make this easier than ever before. With App Studio, you'll be able to build beautiful, intuitive experiences with the same type of experience you're used to with using dashboards. In an App Studio world, instead of having an engineer employ all that logic and the code that goes into the app, we made the back end just as easy as we did the front end with a new tool that's here today called Workflows. Now, instead of writing all that logic as code in the app, you can pass those parameters to a workflow. It's far easier and more intuitive for your company to maintain and iterate on. You can see that example there on the right with my S3 intelligent tiering fix. So let's talk a little bit more about workflows. I know you saw this in the general session. I'm guessing that's why you're here. And I'm excited to announce that workflows uh, are, are now moving to an open beta. We've, we've been running them in a closed beta for about six or seven months. We've been in development for about 18. We're now extending that beta to anybody without any qualifiers. So if you'd like to participate in the beta, we'll reach out to your account team, let them know. We'll get that turned on for you. And we're going to dive into some more details on exactly what workflows is. But in a nutshell, if you think about that continuum we just talked about, right, it started at insight and it ended at action. Well, now that's going to go all the way to automation, right? So again, think about all the use cases that you have for Domo. They're going to fall somewhere on here. And really high value it is to the company and how frequently it's a problem is, is what's going to drive uh, whether you take that next step like we did in the example that I'll share with you here. Uh, that, that app that we had that allowed for CSM assignments to be made right inside of Domo evolved into a completely automated task using Domo workflows. Here's what that automation looks like. Now, this thing runs every morning. Nobody needs to go. They, they don't need to get their alert. They don't need to go look at the dashboard. Uh, they can actually do everything right here powered by this workflow. So it runs every morning, gets a list of new accounts, compares that to accounts that have already been assigned. And it goes through and uses logic to figure out what team owns that account. There's a lot here uh, that, that we'd have to unpack. But what I want to show you here is... The culmination of this is an email that a CS leader gets that you can see over here on this little right-hand tab. Look at that email body, and it's driven by dynamic values that are, that are in the workflow, and it includes all the information that that CS leader needs to make a decision on that CSM assignment. In this case, it, it asks who we'd like to assign the account to and presents the account name. It uh, illustrates what the ACV is or the annual contract value of that account to Domo. Provide some insights on the team. It lets that CS leader know who their most re recent CSM assignment was, and it shares details with them about their current book of business so they can see how many accounts each CSM is carrying, what that revenue load looks like, and really empower them with all the information they need to make a decision. Furthermore, right there in the email is a list of buttons that are labeled with each of their CSM names. They click the button right in the email. Not only does that, that response get passed back into the workflow, but the workflow then goes and sends an introductory email to the CSM, letting them know they got a new account. It creates a, a few action items or to-do lists in the system that the client success managers use to track activities with their accounts, things that we want them doing every time they pick up a new account. So it's, it's taken that use case all the way from insight through alert, action, and all the way to automation. Now, 
we were fortunate that the use case internally grew as the software mm-hmm. grew and, and all that. And it, and it worked real nicely for us. If you think about all your use cases, they're going to fall somewhere on this continuum, right? Based on how mature the use case is, how high value it is to the company and how frequently it's a problem. But I hit on this earlier, the conundrum that I've seen our customers like you guys, and I've found myself in is which use cases are best candidates for new tools like this. And where do I start? Well, I want to introduce you to this matrix that I like to use. You can see on the Y axis, we've got value. And on the X axis, we've got frequency. If you think about all the use cases for Domo within your organization, and, and you think about the value they provide to the company and the frequency with which they occur, you can start to plot them out on here. And, and let me walk you through these quadrants and what they mean. This upper right, this is where I'm starting first, right? If, if I'm thinking about what can I automate, what do I need to incorporate action via app in, it's the ones up here. These are the no-brainers, the superstars, whatever you want to call them. They're very high value to the company, and they occur with a high level of frequency. Absolute no-brainer. Some benefits in, in automating those, you eliminate the human error. Uh, and again, they're just, there are our highest value tasks with the highest level of frequency. I'm going to address every one of those first. Now, this lower right quadrant, this is where I'm going to go look next. Uh, these, you call these your, your cash cows, right? Situations that have a high level of frequency, but a fairly low value are a no brainer for automation. Get your people away from menial tasks so they can focus on meaningful ones, right? Uh, things with, with a high level of frequency and fairly low value are, are perfect candidates. And that's, that's really the, the second place that I'm going to go look. Now, if nothing else has cropped up in the top right or more stuff in, in the lower right, and I'm, I'm getting through with that, uh, the third place I'm going to look is the upper left. Uh, these are our question marks, right? Automation via workflow and the decision to do that is largely driven by frequency of the task. However, you may have some that are of particularly high value to the company. The frequency is a little lower, but maybe it's complex. You want to eliminate the need for human error. Um, Medium to low frequency, but particularly high value. This is the third place that I'm going to go look for use cases to solve with these tools. And lastly is the, the bottom left. Uh, these don't really warrant any of you any more of your time right now. The value's low, the frequency's low. You're going to have a lot of use cases down here, and I think they can really just be left well enough alone. Now, the the CS use case we talked about, the the example that I shared with you here at Domo, it started down here, right? We were a startup, small customer base, small teams, but fortunately for us, as as we grew. The the value of this task grew, the frequency of it grew, and this is the point when we started assigning alerts and, and took the step to develop the app, sped things up significantly, it increased the likelihood of the task getting done and getting done in a timely manner, and today it lives all the way up here, right? We're a very mature organization. Our customers like you are our most valued asset. And as we grow, we're adding new customers all the time. The team is bigger. We're seeing additional staffing, staffing changes. It's just something happening more and more. And we were fortunate enough uh, that that ours followed that that real clean trajectory uh, from lower left to upper right. It was a natural progression because, uh, like I mentioned, our business matured with our product, and that's just how it worked out. Now, for you guys, that's likely not going to be the case. So we go to this matrix and again, start thinking about all the use cases within your organization and where they might fall. Start to plot them out. And as you do so, you'll see them all over the matrix, right? They're going to land everywhere. And, and when you're done, it's, it's going to look something like this, right? Start in that top right. Move down to the bottom right. If there's not a whole bunch more that have popped up or moved up to the top right, because you know, this is not a static chart. These things are going to change over time. Uh, but if but you get the right side of that taken care of, move to the upper left, uh, so on and, and so forth. So, some some an example of how we're using uh, workflows internally here at Domo and apps, and and how you can think of what use cases warrant an investment from you. Now I want to go through and I want to share some use case categories that we've learned from the six or so months of beta we've done with with a healthy base of customers and share some examples with you. As we look at the different categorical use cases for workflows, 
that we've seen come up during this beta period, there's really six different ways they're primarily categorized. The first is a backend for an app. I know I hit on this. Um, app Studio is going to come along later this year. Uh, it's going to allow you to create those beautiful intuitive front end interfaces and pass parameters to a workflow that can handle all the logic you're after. So far simpler uh, to maintain and deploy than, than writing all that code in an app, right? So back end for an app is a huge use case. Governance is another, is another common one. We'll share some examples of that. Uh, data pipeline orchestration, IoT or Internet of Things and event triggered actions. Uh, work ticket queue, it's, you know, where you, you've got a lot of a lot of tasks, tickets you need to work through. Uh, we've, we've got some great examples of that that we'll share. And then lastly, just general automation, right? Things that, that happen uh, with a great deal of frequency. And, and we really just we really just want to automate those. Uh, they've got a pretty clear and concise set of logic. So let's talk more about the back end for an app. Right. Um, I hit on this. Changes require engineering and new deployment. They're highly dependent on a small number of people that are in huge demand. What we've found is that as customers have transitioned all the logic and the back end functionality of an app into a workflow, it opens up the pool of people that can make enhancements or changes to that logic immensely. Right. The intuitive UI that workflows provides, anyone can go in. If I want to change, you know, a, a waiting period from 30 days to 45 days, right? That's literally a few clicks of a mouse in the workflow and anybody can do that. So far easier to version and test and not ever have to redeploy the code for the app because it's really just providing the front end and passing those parameters back. So that's huge. Um, governance. This example that you see up here is, is a really cool one. And this is from a customer that had, uh, they wanted to go through and clean up inactive accounts. So what this workflow did is it runs on a schedule. That's what initiates the workflow starting. And the first thing it does is it queries a data set to identify a list of inactive accounts. It goes through, and if that list is empty, then the workflow just ends, right? Assuming that there are inactive accounts, then it sends an email to every one of the people that are on that inactive account list and just reminds them of their account and lets them know that their account is inactive and if they don't take action, that it's going to be deleted. Um, it kind of loops through there and it, it sets a counter for each time it sends an email. Af and, and after sending each email, it validates before it sends another one that that account is still inactive. So sends an email, waits a week, checks the list, is is there still any inactive accounts on here, right? Because some accounts could go from, from inactive to active. All the accounts that are still inactive, sends them a second note, uh, loops through, sends them a third note. And at that point, if, if there's still inactive accounts on there, then it flags those accounts for deletion. What it does is it prompts somebody on the account team to look at that list and say, hey, these are all the accounts that are going to be deleted. Are there any that you want to apply an exemption to? We're going to delete them due to inactivity. And there's a process where inside of a form, somebody can go in and grant an exemption to not delete or remove that account. Uh, after that, it goes through and identifies all the accounts that have not been exempted and actually deletes them and then sends a final deletion notice onto those customers to let them know that those accounts have been deleted. We've seen tons of use cases just like this that are relative to Domo cards, Domo dashboards, data sets, users all sorts of different governance related tasks where you're just cleaning up old content. Data pipeline orchestration. Uh, this, one's, this one's really cool. Uh, those of you that have been around Domo for a while have, have probably experienced this, but this particular customer had a situation where they had a data set that got used a lot by an executive audience. And you know, they'd check the data, it was very timely and they'd see at the bottom, for example, you know, the data set was last updated six minutes ago. It's a it's powered by a data flow. And they think that, hey, it was updated six minutes ago. My data is no more than six minutes old. Well, little do they know that one of the input data sets may not have run for a few hours or days or weeks, right? And, and there's some portion of that data is incomplete. So what this customer did is for this particular scenario, that data set and that data flow is they moved all the orchestration of that into a workflow. They set all the connectors in the data flow to just run manually. What they do is the workflow starts and it 
initiates all the connectors running. And the length of time that those connectors take to run is variable, right? It depends on how quickly the source system responds and how much data it's got to bring in. Um, it sits and listens and waits for all of those data sets to finish updating. Once each one of them's updated, then it initiates the data flow running and it listens and waits for the data flow to get done. And once the data flow gets done, it starts over and it starts the data sets updating again. So they know that that data flow, that output, that data flow is never going to run unless all of the inputs have got new data. Now, there's some timeout functionality and logic and stuff built in there. So if we expect the data set to update in seven minutes, for example, if after 10 or 15 it hasn't, then it sends a notification to somebody with some details about it and they know what to go look at. But lots of examples we could share with you on data pipeline orchestration use cases and how important those can be. IoT, Internet of Things, or, or event-triggered actions is really cool. Uh, one of the ways that you can initiate a workflow, start a workflow running, is through an alert. And you can see that here on the left. Uh, we've got an action tied to this alert. It initiates a workflow. And you can see that we've even mapped alert values to parameters in the workflow. In this case, um, it's refrigeration units. Um, this, uh, what adds a new record and initiates this alert is when a a temperature reading is higher than we want it to be. And the first thing the workflow does is it receives the name, the ID, and the location. First thing it does is it pings it, right? So it pings that refrigeration unit and it gets some information back and it logs its response to a data set that's used for logging purposes, right? Um, it One of the things that it looks for is, is the device active, right? Is this thing online and is it operating within the parameters we expect it to? If the answer is yes, you'd see the, the path there on the bottom left with the little stop sign, the, the workflow ends. Uh, if the answer is no, then what it does is it creates a user task. It passes the variables that it got, the name, the ID, and the location into a ticket. And it creates a ticket in a queue for a repair person to take a look at it. And it sits there and it'll, it'll wait for up to one hour. Right and Within one hour, if a repair person hasn't taken action, then it sends an email to management. Assuming that inside of that hour, that repair person takes action, one of the things that are they're prompted to do when they fill out that, that ticket or that form is to say, is the device repaired? If they say no, then, you know, you guessed it as emails management. If they say yes, the process restarts. It pings the unit again, looks for its status. And if it's online, then the workflow ends. If it's offline, then it recycles through that process. It lets the repairman know, hey, your repair didn't work. And, uh, and that just continues and repeats until the unit's taken care of. Very cool use case and tons of examples with IoT and, and event-triggered actions. Uh, work ticket queue. Um, don't need to belabor this one too much, but let's say that you're the person responsible for approving requests for new computers, Right. Uh, prior to this, you, maybe you have 23 emails with details on 23 requests. With a work ticket queue, you can go in, you can click on uh, on the queue of new computer requests. You see them all populated with the appropriate information. The workflows are, are sitting there behind the scenes listening for your response. You can punch through an action all of them. And as you do, uh, it feeds your responses back into the workflow and whatever logic takes place down, line, uh, down the line can then occur. And then lastly, general automation, right? I think our, our use case of CSM assignments falls in this camp. It's something that it, it just, just makes sense to automate. We, it needs to run all the time. It's, it's running consistently and on a schedule, and, and it's just general automation. So hopefully uh, those examples were, were thought-provoking. Uh, I'm really excited to see what everybody here does with these products. As again, they, they enter into an open beta now. So excited to see you get in there, start using workflows, reach out to your account team. We're going to follow on with App Studio and what you can do with that. More on that later this year. Uh, but in the meantime, really excited to see what you do with workflows. Thanks for spending some of your time with me today, this afternoon. I'm Dan Hendrickson. Look forward to spending more time with you here soon.